Hi, welcome to Car Mechanical and today I'm going to be talking to you about diesel tuning and I'm going to be talking about it mainly in reference to my 99 Audi A3 TDI. So where a lot of the parts in particular will be in direct reference to my type of engine, that's not to say they're not related to other diesels. So the same principles are going to be true of Cummins diesels, although individual parts might differ a little bit, as it would be for Ford diesels and Peugeot diesels and other diesels out there, as everything's based around a similar set of principles. So if we look at this diagram I've got on screen here, it's of a V6 turbocharged engine, but this can be used for the same principle on diesel cars as well. And what we can see, we've got the engine, we've got the turbocharger, which is pulling in air, pushing it through the intercooler, and that's being pushed back into the engine. And essentially with diesel tuning, what you're looking to do is get as much cold air into the engine as possible, same as you would with a petrol, and getting as much fuel in there as possible. However, you don't have quite the issues you'd have with a petrol with running rich. Now, the very first thing I will call out before we talk about tuning is the maintenance of your car. You want to make sure it's in you know, about the best condition that you can have the engine in because the last thing you want to do is add 30% more power to the car and then snap a belt, bend a rod or something lets go and you've just spent a couple hundred pounds, couple thousand pounds or dollars on tuning. And honestly, if you're on top of your maintenance, this won't be a problem. But if there are little bits and pieces that you've been thinking about sorting, sort them before you get to tuning. The first thing I'm going to say that I would personally sort out would be the clutch. Now you can stick on a stage one tune and some mild tunes, but eventually the stock clutch on the type of TDI I have will start to slip. So what I put on my car when I changed the engine was a G60 flywheel, which is a single mass flywheel rather than a dual mass, and the VR6 clutch. So this combination is good for about 200 brake horsepower and about 300 foot pound of torque. It can go a bit more, but I understand that they start to slip after that. However, the main thing that I'm happy with on this I don't have to worry about my clutch slipping straight after I put a tune on it. So the first area a lot of people look towards for their first tune is to get the ECU remapped. So an ECU remap can cost you from a couple hundred pounds or you can do it yourself and I understand depending on the type of car that can go up to £500 plus. But pound for pound it can be the cheapest and biggest improvement you make to your car because it can increase your performance by up to 30%. So on my 110 horsepower Audi A3, a remap can take it from 110 horsepower up to about 135 horsepower, and a lot of people offer that remap for about 300 pounds. Now, after your stage one remap, or sometimes before, it starts to get a bit blurred and there's a lot more range of upgrades you can do. So one of those upgrades is gonna be nozzles. So you can put nozzles with a larger hole size, and this is gonna allow you to inject more diesel into the engine. So when I mentioned that people sometimes do nozzles before, sometimes all they want is their nozzles changed and a remap to match those nozzles or sometimes people will do it without a remap and that can mean that you're running a little bit rich and on a diesel when you're running rich you tend to get a bit of black smoke however some people don't mind it if it's just a bit hazy uh, but the more and more you overfuel, the more unburnt diesel you have and the more black smoke you'll have coming out of the exhaust. So now you've got upgraded nozzles, you're getting extra fuel into the system, you're gonna be running a bit rich. So what you're gonna want is a bigger turbo and a popular option a lot of people go for is go for the next size up. So on my car, I've got a VNT 15 turbo and the option people go for is the VNT 17 or you move between that. So there's one that came from PD 130 engine. So the VNT 17 is from PD 150s, but you choose a turbo that's appropriate to the power that you're looking for or you can go right to the other end of the scale and go for stuff like a BNT20 or hybrid turbos, which I'll come to in a bit. So now we've got more fuel going in, we've got more air going in, we need to cool that extra air down. Because if we look at the stock intercooler on my car, it's tiny. It's also in a fairly tucked up place. Two options here. For my car, luckily, there is actually an uprated side mounted intercooler I can get, which means I can bolt it straight in without having to change any of my piping or any of my fittings and it has twice the volume of air going through it as the stock intercooler. Or the other option, and again, this is based on your power goals and how cool you want everything and how much work you want to do. You can go for a front-mounted intercooler, which is gonna be placed directly into the airflow, and it's gonna get as much cold air as possible into the engine, and cold air is more dense air. Dense air means you're gonna get more power out of it. So next, we're gonna have a look at the exhaust. So the stock exhaust on my car is full of quite a few restrictions. There's restrictions in the cap, there's restrictions in the center silencer and there's restrictions in the muffler. Now ideally, you want a straight pipe that comes straight from your turbo and going out the back. That's not possible in all cases, but if you are able to remove the restrictions with a performance exhaust or a straight through on the cap, but maybe not the muffler, 
these are all things that can help to aid your turbo spool up time and getting as much air and volume through the engine as possible, as quick as possible. Now on my Audi A3, assuming I've done all of these upgrades that I've just spoken about and had it remapped to match the upgrades, I could be looking at 175 to 200 brake horsepower. But what would I then look at next? So the things I would be looking at next, it would be bigger parts and also probably looking at custom engine internals. So I'd be looking at a bigger turbo, I'd be looking at bigger nozzles, I'd be looking at a beefier clutch that could take over 300 foot pound of torque. I'd probably also be looking at the fuel pump, so I'd be looking at a bigger than the stock 10 mil fuel pump and going for an 11 mil fuel pump. I'd be looking for the in-tank fuel pump to be a lift pump from the later pump juice engines. Looking at the engine internals, I'd be looking at stronger con rods, so there's a lot of custom con rods out there that are available. I'd be looking at new pistons, I'd be looking at getting those fitted and you know, potentially having the engine slightly bored out to get the best possible fitting on those pistons. You can also have a look at custom cams. Uh, if you're going as far as looking at custom cams, you'll be looking at porting your inlet and your outlet manifolds, just getting everything flowing as much as possible. So if you've gone that far with the type of engine that I have here, you'd probably be looking in the region of about 250 brake horsepower. If you wanted to go beyond that, you then go for even bigger turbos. You're then looking at things like nitrous injection, propane injection, water meth kits, which you could add on at any point. And if you've come this far again on the same kind of car I've got, you're gonna find other issues. You're probably tearing the gearbox to shreds. You probably need an LSD so you can put the power down without you know breaking traction all the time. And you get you're heading towards a territory where it might make a bit more sense to get a more powerful stock car that you can take to a similar power level or higher because of, to get up to the, the crazy sort of powers of 300 horsepower on a 1.9 TDI in a 1200 kilogram car, you're talking about, I'm guessing four or 5,000 pound, you know, if not more, but it's really about where you wanna to go to and what your budget is and what you're happy with but you might be just as well going out and spending, you know, the four, five, six thousand pound on a three litre TDI here in the UK anyway. So that's it for my guide and my overview on the different bits and pieces you can do on diesel tuning. Now coming up soon, I'm gonna be starting some diesel tuning videos on my Audi A3 with some of the bits that have been mentioned in this video and with some other unique stuff that I haven't. If you want to check out and follow the tuning series I'll be doing, hit the subscribe button on the channel. If you think you know anyone that would be interested in these videos, please share the video out and the channel, it helps out a bunch. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below.